Any more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, could you explain a little bit more about what's going on in the reverb module? Mm -hmm. Usually I assume that draw sure. is the other side of wet, but now we have... Right. So, and by the way, uh, real uh, quick, I want to point out these three little, t uh, little icons right here. You can turn each module on or off individually. It's like if you just want to do EQ and reverb and leave ambience off, you just can switch it off. Um, but here in the reverb module, um, and I'm not sure, but um, where's my, uh, can you guys tell me, was, is a lot of the EQs or the reverbs are based on um, exponential audio reverbs, right? The Phoenix, it's all the Phoenix design. Um, so you can, you can adjust not only the uh, level of the reverb, you can adjust the time quite simply and the pre-delay and you can just grab this like and these first reflections you can just roll them out if you want to, right? The other thing you can do too is uh, this high pass, low pass, like it, it actually is pretty good about selecting the plate, the chamber, the hall, whatever it feels it needs. It's good at kind of picking the room. Um, and then the density is kind of fun to play with if you feel like, oh, it's just, it's there, but it's kind of metallic. Just dial the, that up. And then also um, low pass and just drag the low pass. That's why it's up on the front because it's, it's usually the thing you need to adjust the most. It's the time, the low pass, and, you know, sometimes the pre-delay. Yeah, go ahead, Marty. Do you find that uh, uh, when you get into certain scenes, if you're in a reoccurring show that's shot in the same locations that uh -huh. you can use, Let's say episode one's what you found for yes. that particular room. I library it. See snapshots up here? Yeah. Save snapshot. Okay. And by the way, there's a lot of shows I cut where they come back to the same scene. Same scene, same problem. Okay. Same set, same problem. Right? Uh, they're always walking into the scene on a master shot and it's, you know, 20 feet off the boom. And sometimes they'll walk into the boom. That's great. But I'm tracking the wire as it's coming in and I have to use dialogue match to make that wire feel like it is it gets to the boom as they arrive into the focus of the boom as they clip clump their way through <laughs> the wooden floor on every set <laughs> maybe it's me yeah go ahead question uh, do you know if they advanced the EQ match or the ambience match at all or would these drop over? Uh, they're tweaked a little bit but uh, uh, EQ match is close the thing about EQ match is I always do it by ear even though I let the computer suggest to me where we need to be uh, and then I'll adjust accordingly, you know. And it's, it, what the, the handy part of this is when you're auditioning is this ear. Right, so the ability to switch between the reference file and what you're trying to tweak on the fly is, is probably the most important feature of this is to audition. All the time, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, you know, the thing is, usually with most production, if I if I have ADR that's coming in, I've cut clean fill anyway, so I I don't really use the ambient match as much. Uh, I use it, and we can. By the way, we can jump into some RX uh, seven tips and tricks after this. Um, I'm happy to guys show you stuff. Yeah, in the back. How is it going to get smarter? Oh, how's it going to get smarter? Well, it's uh, most all the stuff that. Um, isotope does is machine learning algorithms now you know um, and I can kind of explain it easier with dialogue map or dialogue isolate dialogue isolate basically what it does and this was kind of the breakthrough for um, uh, for isotope is it actually had learned what dialogue is supposed to be what it's supposed to look like dialogue modulations whether it's male or female small or big it can identify the dialogue modulations and then it can separate out what you don't want and you can adjust that separation out, right? That's basically what the machine learning has done. So the same thing here, in this case, machine learning basically analyzes the audio clip that you've got and it's like, okay, I have this recording that's dry, but I need it to be wet and based upon what I, I'm able to analyze, I think this is the reverb setting. So it actually learns from the reference clip what, what you want the you know, up, applied to final result to be. That's in a nutshell what it is. It's, uh, it's always analyzing it. It's actually doing it pretty fast. I mean, for, for the amount of math that was involved in you know, getting some of this stuff done, modern computers, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing that it works. 
will it get to a point where you won't have to adjust the EQ or the reverb? Eventually? Well, I'm hoping it gets to the point that we can get rid of actors. <laughs> you know, I'd like to just type in the line or, or you know, just say, well, he was supposed to say this, but he mumbled that, you know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think um, it's every, they're, out, they're always improving them, you know. So, uh, and by the way, uh, Dave, right? Okay, I it can only see part of your face. Um, there's another way to use this in music, we're finding, which is really interesting. So let's say you do uh, a vocal recording somewhere, or even strings or horns or whatever, and then you have to go to another studio and record overdubs of that. It's never going to match because the room is different, no matter how much reverb you paint on this thing. So you can actually take, uh, like I've heard an example where they took strings, a recording of strings, then they went to another studio, recorded to overdub the strings, and then they used dialogue match to make the new strings sound like the old strings. So it has more than that because we're just trying to figure out how to use it now. Now that we have it, we're like, oh, what else does it do? Let's turn all the knobs and see what it does. You know. Um, anyway, any more questions? No? You see this as a standalone at any time in the future? Yes, it is a standalone now. Because oh, I thought it was just in Pro Tools. Oh no! It's it's but it's sold. It's a standalone pro. Uh, uh, it's a standalone plugin, Audio Suite plugin, inside of Pro Tools. It, it'll be you can buy it separately. Can right? you use it outside of Pro Tools? That's the question. I don't know. Uh, do you know? We know what pla Not yet. But don't. Yeah. I don't work for them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pro Tools only. Yeah. Right now it's Pro Tools only. But is it on Windows? The Windows-based Pro Tools as well? Yeah. It is. Ooh, okay. Can you, as a module, can you, can you, so if you're sending all your audio to, to the uh, RX, can you run this through that? No, I, this is actually standalone audio suite because of the way it has to work. Um, you know, in this last release of RX, anyway, what, what happened is a lot of the sort of more heavy duty uh, machine learning algorithms like Dialog Match and D Russell, or sorry, uh, um, uh, Dialog Isolate and D Russell. Uh, and by the way, if you don't know D Russell, it's the world's neatest magical tool about cleaning up dialog. Um, but uh, those were ported over to Audio Suite in seven, which is a really big deal because now you can go through and cut an entire scene, select the whole scene, and then just use the Audio Suite and you know hit pro hit render and walk away for five minutes and come back and the whole the whole scene has been D Russell or you know, or, or dialogue isolated and dropped all the noise floor down, you know, like 10 dB or something. Yeah. Do you have stereo instances of uh, dialogue? Uh, I don't know. You know, I've actually never tried it in stereo. I mean, for string matching. Yeah, I don't know. Um, has anybody done it in stereo? Is it is it load stereo in mine? Oh, okay, yeah, I guess it does. I only deal with one mic at a time. <laughs> all right, more questions, yes. So for dialogue de reverb mm -hmm. in uh, advance, I think it's brilliant. Right. And then since you're saying, can we now, since you can adjust back and take out, have you experimented with yes. and forth and decided that there are instances where this is going mm -hmm. to be a better result than dialogue de reverb, which I think is brilliant? Okay, so I've used, I've stacked them up, right? So I've gotten some ADR, I don't know if any of you guys ever gotten ADR from overseas. Uh, or small foreign countries or little, you know, little tiny little recording studios in the middle of nowhere and they're recording in what essentially sounds like a glass phone booth. Um, and you're like, oh, how am I going to make this work? So I've actually used D-Reverb to strip the reverb out of it and then I've shoved it into Dialog Match, taught it the boom and made it, and I've saved stuff. And actually I've had stuff come in from iPhones that I've made work. <laughs> kind of scary. Yeah. But the read was good. The read was better than, you know, the assistant editor, picture editor reading it, so, which was my only other option. All right, any more questions? Yes, in the back. Uh, two questions uh -huh. about that actually. Uh, after doing the reverb, oh, thank you. Uh, after doing uh, D reverb in RX and then pumping it over here, are there any uh, artifacting problems that you see? Not really, but I can tell you my general rule of thumb with processing any kind of sound. I don't try not to do any uh, more than three things to it. Okay. Right, because then, like, if you are you if you're gonna uh, 
do several things to a sound file, like you've got some hum to take out, and then you've got, you want a dialogue isolated, or you've got some wrestling. If you like do three or four of those, th if you do more than three layer, three, three processes on an individual sound file, then you start to notice there's issues. You start to lose the clarity, and all of a sudden it sounds like an iPhone recording again. You know.